I went on a thrift trip today and found some interesting stuff. I'll tell you what I found on Thrifty AV. Today's thrift venture didn't yield any hardware, but I did find some interesting media, including some interesting blank media. So let's get started. The first thing I want to talk about is the Sony PR150 professional recording tape. Uh, this is quarter inch tape, one mil, splice free polyester PR150, 1800 feet. Manufactured in Tokyo, Japan. Distributed by Superscope, Sun Valley, California. Now this reel has music recorded on it. Here's the reel itself. It's labeled three and three quarters, uh, country and western. Three and three quarters is the middle speed when recording on a reel to reel. You can also record at seven and a half inches per second or one and seven eighths, but one and seven eighths does compromise the fidelity. I used to have a Pioneer reel-to-reel -reel deck, but it suffered like Humpty Dumpty during a move and it had a great fall and it no longer worked after that. I gave that Pioneer away to a repair shop for parts. I'm seeking out another one. And when I find another reel-to-reel, -reel, I will definitely be playing this reel-to-reel -reel tape on it. I don't normally pick up used blank cassettes. But this one is a Maxell XL2, which is a Type 2 cassette that's high position. These are some of my favorite blank cassettes. It says May 88 singles on it. I don't know what that means. There's nothing else with it. I looked at the tape itself. It looks to be in good condition, so I may be recording over this. I'll give it a listen first and see what someone recorded on it and uh, then decide. And speaking of cassettes, I found quite a few blank cassettes, including this brick of Sony HF90s. There's eight tapes in this brick. I picked it up for $2. So I think that's a pretty good deal. Normal bias, 90 minutes each. And the brick is sealed. Not only are the tapes sealed inside here, but the brick itself is sealed. Uh, and I like that. It provides an extra layer of protection. Those aren't the only blank tapes I found. I found these that at one point were sold at Dollar General. This is a universal brand, never heard of it before. 60 minute cassettes, lifetime warranty. The channel cassette comeback would probably label these tapes type zero tapes. This package has a date of 1999 on it. So these are 20 year old tapes we got here. Okay, it says for virtually any standard recording needs, these cassettes offer a special formulation which will provide clear, enjoyable reproduction of your music. High precision, clear cassette shell and internal guidance mechanism for smooth tape handling. Custom engineered and designed by Universal Security Instruments, Owings Mills, Maryland, made in China. So there you go. And the other pack I got, this is Prestige Sound, excellent sound quality, Dynatech International, lifetime warranty, says type one. Again, the cassette comeback channel would probably call these type zero. Provides crisp, clear reproduction for voice and music through extended dynamic range. Special tape for maximum fidelity in mid to high frequency range. High precision, clear cassette shell and internal guidance mechanism provide accurate tape to head alignment. There's no date on the package. These are 60 minute tapes, so 30 minutes per side. Made in China. And one more piece of blank media. This is a Sony 120 minute video eight tape. I'm gonna do some reviews of eight millimeter camcorders in the near future and I'll break the seal on this one when I make that video. Got some more blank media for you. This is Imation CDR 1X through 12X compatible. They had like eight or nine of these things at the Goodwill on North First Street in Abilene. 
you might be able to still pick these up if you watch this video soon. Uh, but the fact that it was 1x through 12x was a big red flag for me because modern ones can record faster than that. So I looked for a date on the package and it says Imation 2000. So these are 19 year old sealed CDR discs. I'll probably go ahead and break the seal on this and check them out, record some test recordings and see if they're still good because the dye on this stuff can go bad after a while. Okay, on to my pre-recorded media. Let's start with this DVD of Lonesome Dove. I paid a little more than I would have wanted to, $2.99 for this. Uh, it is sealed and it's not my only copy of Lonesome Dove. So I'll be reviewing my various Lonesome Dove copies on their various formats in an upcoming video because I want to see if the entirety of the Lonesome Dove series is on this DVD. And I kind of want to check out the extra bonus features on here as well. So watch for that pretty soon. I got four CDs on this trip. The first one is Tubular Bells by Mike Oldfield. This, uh, this is music that you might recognize from The Exorcist. This is the original CD issue, not the remaster. I already have the remaster. I wanted the original one, and here it is. This is Rick Astley, Hold Me In Your Arms. I was hoping I could rickroll you with this one, but it doesn't have the right song on it. So I'm not going to be doing that. This is 1988. I believe this might have been the album after his most famous song. Okay, here we have The Radiator's Law of the Fish. I vaguely recall the name of this band, but it's just not coming to me. I gave 99 cents for this. The CD's in great shape. What got me was this is an original Columbia release. You can tell by the, the font on the spine that this is an original Columbia release. So this might be worth it. This might have been a mistake. If I don't like it, I'll list it on one of my trading sites and uh, maybe I can find a home for it. And here we have Jimmy Eat World, the self-titled album. This is one of my niece's favorite bands. I don't have this. I figure if my niece likes it, I ought to check it out. So here's Jimmy Eat World. And then I have four records. Let's start with Mr. 12 String Guitar. Uh, this has some uh, songs that were popular in the 60s, obviously performed on a 12-string guitar. This one says complimentary, not for sale, so this was a promotional release. It features Glenn Campbell, which I like him as a performing artist. I also like the sound of a 12-string guitar, so I really look forward to listening to Mr. 12-string guitar. This is Carly Simon, Another Passenger. It's from 1976 and I'm not real familiar with it, but the producer is Ted Templeman, who went on to produce the early Van Halen albums that featured David Lee Roth. So maybe, uh, maybe we'll hear a little bit of rockin' Carly Simon on this. This is Janice Ian, Between the Lines. Uh, this is 1975. I've heard the song When the Party's Over. Uh, this one looked to be in pretty good condition. I think it might have probably been donated by the same person as the Carly Simon. It's about the same condition as the Carly Simon. And I look forward to listening to this one as well. Last album I want to talk about is Bill Cosby. Those of you with or without children, you'll understand. 1986, so it's probably going to be strongly associated with the Cosby Show. I paid a whole quarter for this thing, so we'll see how funny he was in 1986 when he wasn't doing his show. Not exactly AV gear, but this uh, humidifier here is the same brand of mine, the Reservoir Small. These things usually pick up a lot of scale as the water spins out of these holes. This has zero scale on it. 
It looks clean through the, through the hole that goes through the middle. So it's hardly been used. And this will fit on the one that I already have. Hey, and it says it works. So that's a bonus. I saw a couple other things that I did not pick up. So here they are. This Exodus album is a soundtrack, not the metal band. Here's an iOmega zip drive. It's the parallel port variety. Goodwill wanted $20 for it. If I had any media on zip drive, I would have snatched this up. But as it stands, I'll wait to see if it's still there when blue tags go on sale. If you enjoyed this video or any others in the Thrifty AV series, please like and subscribe. Thank you to my patrons for supporting this channel. And remember, stay thrifty everyone.